Hi, this is Renaissance at Zest in Mansfield, and this is Sasha, who I'm going to talk to you about how he got started in DJing. I just started going to the Hacienda and getting into the music, like in '88, and buying records and stuff. And uh, this DJing job came up in like the local pub, and uh, this guy asked me if I could DJ, and I thought, well, I've got loads of tunes, I might as well give it a go. And um, I just started doing little clubs in Stockport. Um, then I moved into Manchester, I moved into a block of flats with one of the DJs from Hacienda and he just he just started getting me loads of work and I was doing like pirate radio in uh, Moss Side and uh, just sort of all developed from that really. So where are your favourite clubs to play then? I like doing Hacienda every now and then, it's good every now and then, you know, sometimes it's a bit dodgy. Um, I, just, I just like playing to a good crowd, you know. So the atmosphere is important to you then? Well, the atmosphere, I mean, the atmosphere is the most important thing about a club. It doesn't matter whether mm -hmm. you've got the best sound system or the best lights or the best yeah. DJs. It's, you know, it's, it's down to the people that come in and whether they have a good time. And, you know, th that is the most important thing about a club is, is that when people go out to a night, you know, at the end of the night, they, they've all had a really good night and, you know, and everyone's happy. That is the most important thing. So what have you got planned for the future, like for the next few months and that? Because I've heard you've got a, you're doing an LP. Yeah, well, I've been, like, um, remixing and stuff, you know, for the last year, you know, I've just been doing loads of different remixes and stuff, and I thought mm -hmm. it was about time that instead of giving away all my ideas all the time and just being credited as a remixer DJ, I wanted to take it a bit further by setting up a sort of soul-to-soul -soul type thing, you know, like, where, like, I, I, I am actually the artist and I, I'm working with loads of different, like, musicians, yeah. singers, um... I've just got I've just got lots of ideas, you know, and I just, I just, it's going to be really exciting actually, sort of writing songs and, and you know getting my own thing together. I don't know, what was the question again? Do you know how to play?
Sasha. Basically, I mean, I've got a whole sort of concept for the album. It's not just, it's like, it, it just appalls me when I go, when I'm DJing at a club and a PA comes on and they've got three tracks on that and they come on and they, they, they mime to, to they mime to their three tracks, get their grand at the end of the gig and, and go home. You know, I want to take, I want to take that, I want to, basically I want to take a live concert feel into the clubs because nobody really does it successfully. Basically, all I can see in, say, eight months' time, that I'd be doing what I'm doing now, you know, putting nights on where like it would be, um, I, I would be DJing. But at various points in the night, like I, I would say, set the decks up on the stage, and at various points in the night, I would actually mix my own music into the music that's running. The whole night would be a constant sort of PA, and I think it would just be so exciting for people on the dance floor yeah. just to be there, thinking, you know, what's going to happen next? Never know what to expect. Exactly, you know, it's, I think it would it would take DJing. And PAing onto a, onto another level, I'm so I'm really surprised no one else has done it. I mean, people like CNC when they DJ, they have keyboards set up and like they'll do things like they'll drop a cappellas, and uh, David Cole will get on the keys and start jamming underneath it. And it's just it, when you actually see that in a club, it's just so heavy. So outside of like DJing, what's your best experience you've ever had then? Going to Japan just completely blew my mind. You know, just the, the whole place and everything was like amazing. You know, I, I won't be going back there this year, but. Just everything about the place, it was just like going to another planet out there, you know, and that's probably like, that's one of the most amazing experiences I've had because I just spent two weeks out there with my mouth open just going, look at that, look at that, look at that. <laughs> oh, the Eclipse, when it first started off, I used to love playing there, it was excellent. Just the whole place completely blew me away. It's amazing. Have you ever done anything outrageous that you're really ashamed of that you want to broadcast? The sort of music you used to listen to when you were 12, you know, you look back and think, oh my God, did I really, you know, did I really actually like Billy Joel when I was 12? <laughs> um, but I mean, it's not, I suppose it is quite embarrassing. There's a video of me from uh, The Hitman and Her, and uh, when, it, when, it was, when it went to the Hacienda, and uh, I'm on the middle of the stage dancing all night, you know, and I'm on the camera loads of times, and I look at that and cringe. Something trivial. How do you eat your Cadbury's cream eggs? I just swallow it whole. So, uh, how many Valentine's cards did you get then? Oh, what, well, am I supposed to answer? <laughs> yeah. Um, I got about three, I think. Yeah, have you always got a designer stubble? No. <laughs> if I'd known, if I'd known it was such a professional thing, you know, I would have had a shave and everything. <laughs>
professional. Well, I thought it was somebody, I thought it was somebody coming in with a handheld, handheld <laughs> thing, you yeah. know? Oh, no. I didn't know there'd be microphones and lights and everything. Here's a quick look at the latest gear from the depot in Birmingham. And here's Carl Cox. OK, hello, and with me is DJ Carl Cox, who I'm sure you've all heard of. Hello, <laughs> Thank Carl. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> when did you get started originally? When I was about eight, really. Um, <laughs> I used to uh, play records to my family's uh, friends who used to come round, and uh, they asked me to sort of like play the music for them, and uh -huh. I enjoyed it, sort of like doing that as an entertainer, so I've actually carried it off since I was eight till now. So what have you got planned for the future? Have you got any like hits coming up? Um, well, it would be nice to sort of like do, make every record a hit. Um, the last record was a total surprise for me. Uh, I want you forever. Yeah. Um, really, the, the punt, the punt has put it there. Um, it was a good record anyway. Success. But, yeah, yeah, they're the ones that, that took it to the top for me. So, well, fair play to them. Uh, I've got a new single coming out. Um, I don't know what it's called yet. We're still working on the, on the, on the lyrics, but. Yeah. Uh, uh, you will know about it soon as it gets released on Perfecto Records. A lot of people have heard about you because of your three deck techniques. So how did you get started with that? Well, basically, that goes back to so like a uh, big party I've done in Oxford called uh, Sunrise. It was in 1989, yeah. Midsummer mid Night Madness. And um, every sort of like top DJ at that time was there, and I was still very unknown. And there was three turntables set up, and, and there was like 15 to 20,000 people open air. First time I've ever sort of like done a, a serious oh, full-on party. Yeah. And. Um, <laughs> And I had a manager at the time, Maxine, she said to me, well, there's three decks there, you know you can do it and, and do it. So she was like a little bit of a guardian. Yeah. Uh, and basically, with the mixing that I've been be doing for the last sort of like five or six years, I've, I've used two decks to sort of hilt in the respect of that. I've done the most I can do with two decks. So yeah. then using the third deck, introducing sort of like a new sort of like creative format for DJs. Uh, and actually what was coming out of the speakers was, was people who had never heard anything like it before in their entire life. <laughs> so I made my name, that was my big break in 1989 on three days, so I've looked back since. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks very much then. Thank you. Okay. And this is Manic, which consists of Vanessa, Danielle, Kieran, Lee, and John. This is Kieran and Lee, and they create the music for Manic. So, uh, somebody's telling me to ask you how you met. So well, it was a rather bizarre incident, basically. <laughs> what happened was I was sat in a toilet, and um, Kieran posted this letter <laughs> through saying, Do you want to be in a kicking techno band? And I posted a load of toilet paper underneath saying yes. <laughs> and uh, the next thing we knew, <laughs> it was on the hit man in here, weren't we, Kieran? <laughs> That's how it goes, yeah. it? Cool, that. Tell me about the white label. Right, well, what we did was pressed up um, 500 at the beginning of I'm Coming Hardcore, and uh, the buzz was massive on the dance scene, you know, so it was, wasn't it, John? It was Huge. massive, wasn't it, John? Massive. Go on, John, tell them how massive yeah. it was. I've not seen a bigger tune, tune like made since... Um, the White Label by Manic. So what was your favourite experience at a rave then? Got out there, yeah, on the stage, about 2,500 people, screaming, no less. <laughs> no <laughs> less? As we walked onto the stage and, uh, cut a long story short, yeah, halfway through, an old schoolmate of mine, an old school chum, one would say, was uh, in the crowd shouting, John, what are you doing? And I, <laughs> so, at the time... <laughs> at the time, at the time, I wasn't too sure what to do, like, I mean, there were 2,500 people in the crowd, 
and I was about to stop and have a chat to him about old times. <laughs> but like... Dead and professional like. Well, exactly, so I didn't, I, as oh. you can... Because, good man, because, good man. Because the thing is, which I think we all forget, 